In today's video, I'm going to be painting my first ever model of the combined army from Corvus Bellis Infinity. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. I've never painted one of these guys before, so I had to first of all figure out how am I going to even approach the painting process. And this was meant to be just like an evening project, let's say, something that I do after my day job is over and maybe like finish it the next day or something like that, but nothing like a lengthy process. So I had to come up with something relatively fast, I didn't have a plan before. So the easiest way to do this seemed like uh, to just airbrush the ropes first because they have this subtle greenish interesting tint on them, uh, on the cover art, and um, then just go from there. And I think this was not the best approach to be honest, but I learned from it. I already know that when I do my next combined army model like this, I will not actually use the airbrush, I think, because I ended up doing these things anyway by hand in the end I just painted over many of the layers that I did with the airbrush and I wasted a lot of efforts it's not completely wasted I think it looks cool in the end but there would be easier ways for me to do this in the future just keep this in mind if you want to copy what I did here the overall idea was really simple though I wanted to do something like a, let's say a zenithal highlight with this greenish gray color so that I can have all the upper facing surfaces of the ropes have this greenish tinge and uh, be highlighted and don't be just black. And then because the end result looked a little bit washed out and desaturated, I brought back the color a little bit and strengthened the shadows with some Eldari emeralds combined with black. And this is how it looks after the airbrushing step, which I think honestly I could have skipped. I could have just painted this in later by hand, but in the end I don't mind. It didn't take too much time and it still helped me later on with the ropes. And time to switch over to the brush, and that was all the airbrushing steps, I promise. Um, the next step is very easy. This is the blocking in the colors for all the armor. So I ended up using a single color, Hall Red, for all of this. This is a great color for, like a base coat for red, in my opinion, at least. Uh, I could have just left some of the black behind, honestly, if I wanted to go for a higher contrast, but I decided not to because in the end there's going to be a really high highlights on this one. If you look at the cover art you can see all the, the whites. So I thought that this brownish quite dark red is going to be good enough for my shadows. And if you use the proper consistency of paint then with whole red you can cover everything in a single pass. You don't even need the two coats. The trick that I tend to use with really small models with a lot of details like all the infinity stuff is to use quite thick paint with a big brush, but apply very soft touches because if you just touch the details with thick paint, uh, you are going to be able to just kind of like almost dry brush the details on it. But if the paint is flowing too much, as soon as you touch the, the detail, it just will flow around it, which is definitely not what you want. I also use the same color to highlight not only the armor panels, but also the edges of the ropes because they have this nice red pattern around them. So instead of using a normal edge highlight, I went for a much thicker one so that it really looks good and shows up. And once I was mostly done with the, the whole red, which is going to be our shadow color really for our reds, uh, I had to figure out what mid-tones I'm going to use because it's not going to be just a single one, since on the cover art, if you look at it, you can see that there is a lot of different shades of red on this model. And um, I think that's great, actually, because there's so much red on it, you have to distinguish them somewhat. So I decided to go for a different red for all the armor panels and then for everything else, basically. And I used burnt red as my first color for all the, the armor panels. This color might look a little bit bluish or like a magenta on the wet palette, at least for me, but when it's on the model and it dries, uh, it looks way warmer and more orangish. And that's exactly what I was going for. I was trying to go for something that is more on the, let's say, warmer red side for all the armor panels and then a little bit more cold for the, the rest of the model. I covered around 90% of the armor panels with this and only left a little bit of the whole red in the, the shadow areas. By the way, if you want to replicate this with some other types of paints, let's say uh, Citadel, which a lot of people have, then you could go for something like Wordbearer's Red for the whole red, so for the shadow color. And then you could use, let's say, a Corn Red or a Mephiston Red for the two different types of reds on the armor. 
as the next step, I added a little bit more of an orange color into my burnt red to make the highlights. And this was quite straightforward so far, but on the box art you can see that there is this huge contrast between the highlights and the midtones and shadows because it goes almost to pure white. And doing this is not exactly easy because as soon as you start adding pure white into your red, and you will see it here, I'm using ivory for that, uh, it will turn pink. But in this case this is fine, I know it will look ugly at first, but believe me in the end it will come together and it's gonna be okay. So even though it looks a little bit hideous right now, that's fine. I was just still doing all the, the edge highlights on all the armor panels. You will notice, and this is very important, I was not doing it everywhere, right? But I already did almost all the edges with the previous color with the more orangish one. And here I was only doing more like the, the upper facing edges. So let's say like 70% of the edges were actually highlighted with this color. I keep mentioning this in every video that I make because I have to remind myself as well to not highlight every edge and also not highlight the full edge because if something is fully highlighted then it doesn't shine, it's like it doesn't have contrast, right? It's just a single color. In order for something to look bright, something else needs to be dark around it basically. And when I was done with this one, I decided to go even further and once again imitating the box art, push it almost to pure white with ivory and do even less of the edges, uh, not just fewer edges in general, but also less of the surface of the edges. With this done, I wanted to move on to the next part of the armor, the other type of red. Uh, I will get back to this a little bit, this is not finished, but uh, for now it's good enough. My paint of choice was wine red because I wanted to go for something a little bit more magenta uh, than orangish. And I use this for the face, for all the kind of inner parts of the armor. And just like with the other red, I covered all the details, like 90%, left some of the, the whole red behind in the shadows. And then the big difference here is that I didn't add any orangish color, any other red really, but immediately started highlighting by adding more ivory to it. And as you can see, I went immediately for this very stark contrast between the highlight color and the mid-tone, uh, but that's fine. We are going to use something later on to, to knock it back. So instead of highlighting it up painstakingly, I decided to I just go really bright and then later shade it down a bit. And especially at this stage, in this part of the model, there is a lot of intricate detail here on the collar, on the, the stomach and um, the, the chest area and the face. There is a, a lot of sculpted detail that is not exactly easy to hit properly if you don't have the right consistency. So once again, the paint should not flow too much. It should be almost without water, just from the wet palette and a little bit of moisture on the brush and then apply very, very light touches. That's the trick. And don't forget that even if you make a mistake, it's really easy to correct it. And I did this here quite a bit as well. I went back later at multiple different stages when I noticed that something is not thin enough, it's not crisp enough. I went back, I repainted it, I painted a little bit of red around it so that I corrected the, the smudges. Like there's a lot of little corrections that you can make and they make all the difference. The more time you put in, the more perfect it's gonna be in the end. I wanted to do this in a couple of hours and I ended up spending something like three hours to paint the model and then let's say one more hour to just correct a couple of things here and there. And I think my end result is pretty good, right? But if I spent, let's say four more hours correcting the mistakes, it would probably look even better. So now that I was done, obviously the highlights looked really white. They are super contrasty, right? And I wanted to knock this back a little bit. And here is where contrast paints can really help you out. For everything that was originally wine red, I used Flash Terrace Red Contrast Paint as kind of a shade. Just be very careful here because I was definitely not using this straight out of the pot. I put it on my wet palette and then I watered it down quite heavily so that in the end it's more like a filter or a glaze. And I applied it all over the place, uh, taking care that I don't hit all the, the most raised edges. So I left some of the whites intact, but I still covered quite a bit of it so that it turns more like this reddish hue and it just gets integrated more into the armor. 
Then I did the same thing with Contrast Blood Angels Red for all the armor panels that were originally burnt red. When I was a bit bored with all the intricate details of the model itself, I decided to dedicate a little bit of time to the base, which I didn't do anything with so far. I had some green colors lying around on my wet palette from my previous project, so that was perfect. I was just using those to highlight up the wreck, going from a darker green to a almost yellowish highlight. And then I used Lunar Desert from AK Interactive as my basing material. To be honest, you should do this before you paint the model, but I was lazy as usual with my basing, so I just did it now and I was careful and I didn't mess it up, but just be careful if you do it at this stage. And along the way I also painted in the shadow colors for all the blue elements, so the sword and also this energy source for the weapon. Any dark blue will do here, but I already had dark Prussian blue on my wet palette once again, so I was just using that. And once I was done with the basing and everything, I decided to finish the sword, so I just did my usual very basic power sword routine on it by adding more and more highlight colors into the Prussian blue that I was using for the shadows. The trick here is just to do good edge highlights, honestly, and then if you have space left in between the edge highlights, then you can do some additional glowy bits, like on the top of the sword or on the side on this like more flat bit towards the handle. So in the end, what you are going for is kind of like a non-metallic metal, but with blue in this case. So going from a dark blue all the way up to a white, or in our case, it was an ivory. Normally I would finish this up with an airbrushing stage so that I integrate the highlights and make it even brighter. But for something that I just did in the evening, I think it looks good enough and it doesn't need that much more smoothing. With that done, I went back to the ropes a little bit because yes, I airbrushed them in the beginning, but there was not enough contrast on them. So I was using this green gray that I was using for the airbrushing stage and used it pure uh, on the brush to highlight the ropes a little bit. I also glazed it in, so I created a glaze out of it, I made it way thinner with water and then I used that to highlight up the upper part of the leg and some of the upper facing surfaces of the leg and the rest of the robe and also to smooth out the transition between the, the edge highlights that I created and the rest of the robe. In the meantime, my base material actually dried, so I decided to take the opportunity to use voluptuous pink contrast paint to create the shadow color for it. And with that, the only thing left was the non-metallic metal on the model and then to finish the base. So I went for a dark sea gray just to mix it up because it's usually not the color I use for this, but it works. Any gray would really work for what I wanted to do. So I just did all the edge highlights on all the non-metallics, which is not a lot, fortunately, on this model, and uh, made sure that I highlighted every single edge. I also made sure that I created matching highlights on the panels on the chest, because I already did some on the red parts, or the red stripes, basically, in the armor, and now I had to match those so that it looks like the armor is hit by the light in the same way.
Finally, I used pure ivory as my final edge highlight for the non-metallic metal and I made sure once again, just like with the red, that I only hit certain edges and not all of them and still have contrast even between edges that were highlighted. Honestly, I should have probably done one more highlight with just pure white in very specific areas in small dots, but it was nearing the end of the night. Uh, basically, I wanted to go to bed, so I didn't do that and... I might do that later on, but I think the model looks pretty good as it is. And keep in mind that this is still a higher highlight than on the red armor, because on the red armor, even though we used ivory, it was also knocked back a little bit by the, the shades that we were using, the contrast paints. So those are not as bright as this. So it works out, right? The non-metallic should be brighter than the rest of the model. And by this time, I had been working on this model for like three hours in my Friday evening, so I decided to call it quits and just come back to it on the following day to finish the base and apply a couple of finishing touches and a little bit of corrections here and there. For the base I was a little bit lost because usually I don't paint blue earth, right? I don't have a lot of stuff, a lot of products that would allow me to paint something bluish. Uh, but I really wanted to go for this nice contrasty blue alien thing that the box art has. So the only thing I could find was this glowing blue pigment from Green Star World, uh, which I used kind of like I use any other pigment and I was hoping for the best. And then I applied the white spirit to fix it in place. It just looked like it's just gone. It's not going to even show up. So I reinforced it a little bit even more. But fortunately, once the white spirit dried, the blue actually came back. And funnily enough, it actually glows in the dark. I applied the final touch of Nazdrag Yellow and then Skeleton Hordes on top of the gun because the box art shows this kind of burn effect on the end of the gun which i think looks really cool um, and it worked quite well with the contrast paints once again kind of watered down and with that the model was done and the end result looks like this Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you guys liked it and maybe found even something useful that you can utilize in your next projects. If you did like it, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Thank you very much and see you in the next one.